tonight on EA Sports. It's Super Bowl Sunday. Well, it's been 12 of the longest months ever since Super Bowl 54 took place downstate in Miami, and the world has certainly changed an awful lot in that time. But tonight, for a few hours, we bring the focus back to the greatest spectacle the sporting world has to offer. Super Bowl 55 from Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, and what a matchup we have in store. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Tonight, it's all on the line. We play for the Lombardi Trophy, as it'll be the Pittsburgh Steelers, the AFC champion. So first and 10 now from the 30, taking on the champions from the NFC, the Minnesota Vikings. Alongside my good friend Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gunn, excited for this one. I mean, Charles, the Steelers back in the Super Bowl once again, their ninth appearance overall, second only to the Patriots' 11. But if the Steelers win this one, then they'd be on top of the all-time win standings as it would be their seventh title. What a franchise. Come on, join me for a minute, okay? Come back to the 1970s with me. Back to the Steel Curtain defense. Back to Terry Bradshaw, quarterback. Throwing to Lynn Swan and John Stallworth. Franco Harris running the football with Rocky Blyer. That team was something. All right, and that started the path to where we are right here, right now. This team's pretty good, too. And they want their own history. What an accomplishment this would be to win a seventh Super Bowl title for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Meanwhile, the Minnesota Vikings are back in the big game for the fifth time in franchise history. But we all know one thing has eluded them all these years. And that's an actual Super Bowl victory, partner. They're 0-4 in their previous visits. Super Bowls 4, 8, 9, and 11. And boy, they had some great teams too, didn't they? Bud Grant was their head coach. Fran Tarkington, a quarterback. Alan Page and the Purple People Eaters on defense. They were all Hall of Famers. And don't forget Paul Krause. He's a very proud member of that great secondary they had. So we're going back more than 40 years since their last visit. You think the state of Minnesota is excited about this one? I know they are. They're ready to get this one going. From the 41, Roethlisberger, and that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. The completion good. This is Eric Ebron. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee. And that means fourth down. And this may be a big early turning point in this Super Bowl. They're going to go for it on fourth down here. They'll run for it with Connor. And he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. It's a four-yard pickup, and they're able to convert here on fourth and inches. Thought they might throw the football with a little chunk that they had remaining on fourth down, but they ran it. They got it. And the reason they were able to get it done, he ran that play with conviction, didn't he? Understood he would get a little bit of help from his friends up front, but it was really on him to go ahead and make the power move and get it done, and that he did. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. First and 10 at the 19-yard line. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Open man completes it to Smith-Schuster. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Seven yards to pick up there. And how about this first drive? They're being aggressive, slinging it around. Really confident, too, because they're not trying to fool them with running plays, throwing it, and they're being very successful right now. Throwing again on second down, Roethlisberger. And he's not able to get away. Sacked back at the 22. And that doesn't start to have a good drive quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Got his man. It's caught for a Steelers touchdown. With the first touchdown of this Super Bowl. And the Steelers take the ball down the field and score on their opening drive. 
quite the drive there to get things started. They took up the bulk of the first quarter, and they end up in the end zone. And I love your last point. Ended up in the end zone. Because a lot of teams like those long drives, especially to keep their offense off the field, right? Keep the ball away from them. But they finished it with a touchdown. That's the exclamation point. Now flip it over defensively. They've got to slow that down somehow, right? Maybe they need to be a little more aggressive. Maybe a few more pressures towards the quarterback. And Abdullah will not try to bring it out. Minnesota's offense and QB Kirk Cousins set to go here. Leadership skills apparent early in his life carried over not just in high school but in college where he was a three-time captain of the Michigan State Spartans and learned the art of the comeback early in his career there and actually capped off his career with a big comeback in a bowl game before going off to the NFL. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. It's a pickup of six. Brings up second and four. From the gun, it's a give to Cook. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Four yards the pickup, first down. First down at the 35-yard line. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Steelers seven, Vikings nothing. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and ten. Uh, give the cook out of the gun. Stephon Tewitt, the one that got him down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, and to walk away from that field, I'm like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Seven yards on the play, and that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. And he brings this up to the 46, good enough for the first. They'll give him a yard on the play. And it'll move the chains. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. On the carry, it's Cook. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 38-yard line. First and 10 at the 38-yard line. Working out of the gun, Cousins firing quickly here, and that's complete. A gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. They run again on first down, Cook. There to stop him, Terrell Edmonds. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. He did a fine job there of not hitting it before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well. Think I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. A reminder coming up at intermission, we'll get highlights of the Super Bowl from Jonathan Coachman of the crew in Orlando for our EA Sports halftime. Into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. The safety Terrell Edmonds picks it. It's a foot race. He's at the 30, 10, and he brings this one back. It's a pick six for a Steeler touchdown. What a moment for him, a pick six in the Super Bowl. You think about some of the big pick sixes over the history of this huge game. 
I remember because I was watching with a lot of Colts fans, Tracy Porter picking Peyton Manning to get the Saints' first title. Yeah, that would pretty much seal the deal for New Orleans as well. But I got to go back a ways because, you know, unfortunately, I'm considerably older. Herb Adderley, the Green Bay Packers, got it all started. The first pick six, Super Bowl two against the Oakland Raiders, and some of the better ones that were out there. You might remember Dwight Smith of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers had two in one game when they won their Super Bowl championship against Rich Gannon in Oakland. You mentioned Tracy Porter already. How about James Harrison of the Steelers? You remember that one? 100 yards right before the half ended. That was a big time play. But for me, the absolute classic, Willie Brown in slow motion against the Vikings for the Raiders. The grand old man, Willie Brown. 75 yards. You recall them all. What a play. It's caught inside the 25. And all the way down to the 22-yard line. The 22-yard line. This offense has been slow to get started, but that play will certainly give them a little bit of life. Maybe the late wake-up call that they had been seeking. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get that one out to his running back out of the backfield, but that one was red and timed perfectly, and they were able to break it up. A second down throw for Cousins, setting up the screen for Cook, and down inside the 15, shy of the 10. It's a first down on a gain of 10. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half, but I like their countenance. I like the way that they're having panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball, and what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. And the Vikings are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. It's another 10 yards on that one and another first down. To the air again, it's Cousins. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. D.C. Johnson as the first half is winding down. And the Vikings have made this now a one-score game. The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember when we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yeah. of a half, headed into the locker room? This hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed. A lot of football. Full half to be played. And this will be a touchback as Ed sails over the end line. Here comes Ben Roethlisberger and the Steeler offense back onto the field. He's played a pretty clean first half. A touchdown. No interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot. Maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. So it's halftime here on sports' grandest stage in the Super Bowl. As we send you a stone's throw away across I-4 to Orlando, there standing by is Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? Okay, Brandon, thanks very much, and welcome in. So the halftime show of the Super Bowl abbreviated, ready to go for the second half. Both teams ready after the halftime spectacle, and we are back underway in Super Bowl 55. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Now come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. And for them, a touchdown, their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. You know, despite the score line, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. Now a second down throw for Cousins. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 28, and they will take over at the 26-yard line. 
The first half did not go their way, and that's not going to help matters at all. An interception here on the opening drive of the third quarter. Obviously not what they were striving to accomplish, but you know who's really upset on their team? The defense. Already trailing. They're going to be counted on to try and hold that score at least where it is. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Here's Samuels again. And yet again, he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Great job by this Vikings defense. That'll wind up as a loss on the play, so now they're staring at a third down at 12. And that's what this defense is going to need to do more in the second half. Good pressure that time, forces some indecision in the backfield. He's going to wind up being taken down for a nice loss. Going to throw deep for the end zone. This Minnesota D up to the task on the third down pass play. They certainly had good starting field position on that drive, but couldn't do anything with it after three plays. Have to admit that that's a disappointing end to excellent field position. When that drive started, they had six points that they were thinking about. The bottom line, tremendous starting field position really squandered there as they wind up going backwards and then come up with just three. Well, getting the three turned out to be important. I can imagine a head coach when he ordered the field goal, please salvage something out of this drive. That was not fun to watch. Kirk Cousins now gearing up to lead this offense back out there. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for them, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. Third quarter of the biggest spectacle in sport, the Super Bowl. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Second and ten. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. The third down now. Those last two plays indicative of how things have gone for them. Just nowhere to go on the ground and struggling to put up points. And a throw there going to be incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there. They forced him to throw that one into coverage. And just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. Colquitt on to kick as he sends it away. Fielded just inside the 30. It'll be a 44-yard punt. The return goes for eight. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and ten. The Steelers ready to take over on offense. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns from the 40 now on second down Roethlisberger that went into the hands of his tailback Samuels it's a gain of seven and that'll bring up what looks to be a third and in inches can't be more than a half a foot out of the gun it's Roethlisberger he's got a man open it's Chase Claypool a gain of 10, good for a Steeler first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. On first and 10, it's Roethlisberger. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. A gain of 10 as they look to add on to this 10-point lead. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. First and 10 at the 26-yard line. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Well, that one was all about the defender making life difficult for the receiver. Very tough for a guy to hold on to the football through all that contact. He ends up forcing the incompletion. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Five yards, now it's third and five. Brings up third and five. 
One quarter remains here in the Super Bowl. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Steelers on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This will be third and five. Ben to throw again. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There's pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. So they settle for just the three, but clearly right now anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off, but it's still eight up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. The Vikings ready to go again on offense. And yeah, we're at the time of this Super Bowl where, look, they need points. And yeah, they need them badly. Trailing here in the fourth quarter as they begin this drive first and ten. Now left side on the swing pass. And yeah, this will leave them a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Brings up second. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. They'll probably spend a little extra time dissecting the game film after this when I think the part of their plan was to hit them over the top of the deep ball. They've been unsuccessful all night. And the third interception thrown by Cousins. He's picked off just shy of midfield. And he's going to take this one back to the 37-yard line. Well, you're trailing. It's the fourth quarter, and you've got to throw the football. But the defense knows this, too. So they're just going to sit back, bring in an extra defensive back or two, the old nickel or dime strategy, Brandon, and wait for you to put that bad boy up for grabs. And this one winds up being intercepted. After the interception, here's Roethlisberger. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. Three yards the game there, second down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. The linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. 11 yards there, first down. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swing, slant, quick out, things that they consider safe. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. He'll get that one complete to Connor. Oh, Connor loses it. And the Vikings pick up the football. And his guys are going to get the football at the 23-yard line. No. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration. Not a good play. Gets it to Smith-Schuster on the jet sweep. This carry brought to an end at the eighth. Good stick skills, but not much room to operate. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Brings up second and seven. Here's Roethlisberger. This will be caught at about the five. And they'll get this from the eight to the five. Pick up a three. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Third and four. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Chase Claypool. His second touchdown of this Super Bowl. And the Steelers capitalize on the short field as they take it in for six. Connor going to try and run it. And he is into the end zone to bump the lead up two more. 
Needed a couple yards for the two-point try. They go to the ground game, and it works. And sometimes it's the exact right thing to do because a lot of teams play you for the pass, so you spread people out, decide to run the football, you often find good running lanes. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. First and 10 at their own 28 yards. Kirk Cousins and the Vikings offense back on the field. And that interception that ended their previous drive likely also ended any shot they had at victory. Yeah, long road back from here, no doubt about that one. But let's face it, if you're going to go out there and compete, you want to try and end on a strong note, don't you? Absolutely. It won't end in a victory, like you said, but they can maybe take something positive out of this one. Throwing again, Cousins on second and ten. And that is incomplete. He was looking for his tight end there, Kyle Rudolph, and it's third down. The scoreboard tells the story for him a little bit bleak, and while it's not quite desperation time yet, it's definitely getting close, but the defense reads the scoreboard as well. They're going to back up and make him really earn it. He gets this one into the hands of Dalvin Cook. And this play going to be stopped in its tracks at the 32 and obviously well short of the first down. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They come up on a fourth down situation with things not looking particularly rosy. This one brought in by Jefferson. Oh, now he's stripped. He lost the football. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And they'll take over inside the 45 at the 44-yard line. All right, you've had to put up with me in this booth. I'm going to try and be simple this time and succinct. It simply has not been their night. No, I think that fumble's kind of indicative of how this whole evening's gone, isn't it? Without a doubt. I mean, they've, they've tried, <laughs> but nothing has ever really taken throughout the game. That's why they're down so big. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. A gain of two brings up second and eight at the 42-yard line. Again, a run with Connor. He's got a first down and more inside the 30. And down to the 28-yard line. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. Another example of this offense really having their way, Charles, and another big chunk play there on the ground. And when you look at the defense, they've got to do a much better job of wrapping up when they tackle. A lot of great opportunities continue to slip through their fingers, as do the runners. First and ten is countered, and nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. The tackle made that time by Anthony Barr. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. The Pittsburgh Steelers have won the Super Bowl, and the Lombardi Trophy is going back to the Steel City. For the victors getting to hoist that Lombardi trophy, you know, we've talked to guys that have done it, and they say there's no better feeling in sports. I don't know how there can be. The, the, the journey to get to this game is incredible. And then to finally break through and win it when all eyes are on this game alone because there's nothing else going on, that's just got to be absolutely amazing. That The task, incredible. But the accomplishment, forever. And they are the Super Bowl champs. The Lombardi Trophy is theirs, and so are bragging rights for an entire season. And what a season it has been. Feels like we have been there every step of the way. Our entire crew doing a wonderful job. Thanks to my broadcast partner, Charles Davis. For all those guys, I'm Brandon Gunn signing off. We'll talk to you next season right here on EA Sports.